What's up guys? Welcome to my van tour. People have been asking me for a van tour for almost two years since I started working on this thing. So I just want to get into it. So this is my Ram 3500 extended, which is the biggest van that Ram makes. I wasn't really planning on buying the biggest one, but I was at the dealership and they gave me a good deal on it. I got it right before the boom and Amazon started buying them all. So I kind of got lucky there, but I got it as a travel van for like weekend trips. But turns out I ended up living in it and I've been full time for about a year and a half. So I just want to show you around, show you what I got going inside my tiny home on wheels. So the floor is constructed with gluing furring strips between all the ribs of the floor. And then we followed that with some poly iso foam in between all those furring strips, a layer of Reflectix, and then a layer of plywood all coated in uh, Kills Primer. And then my dad did this really nice job putting this LVT floating floor in here. And we finished it off with this strip of aluminum. This is a table that I got here that I set up if I'm ever at like a campsite. And then I got my trash can and then my boil and brew French press. Sometimes I boil my coffee over as you can tell, but this has been awesome. I got my little my trash can and my table. It's kind of a nice spot out of the way to keep that kind of stuff. So when I get in here, um, you can see I got this curtain. This is a very thick curtain that I got on Amazon and it really does a good job of separating the temperature between the cab and then the rest of the van. And I got it up here on copper tubing because I'm fancy like that. And then above the curtain, we got the bulkhead area. And as you can see, this is kind of a mess, but this is just where I throw all my extra coats and hoodies. And I got different things like uh, extra battery charger, that kind of thing that I keep up here just to keep it out of the way. Then up here, I got some hooks where I keep my hoodies. I got a lot of hoodies. I like wearing hoodies. So I got a spot to put those there. And then down here, I have this basket, which houses all my shoes, which is probably due for an audit at this point because I don't think I need that many shoes living in a van. But I do a lot of different activities like bike riding and I go to different events where I gotta have different shoes. <laughs> and speaking of that, take a look at my closet here. You can see I got a mirror in here and this is where I keep my paper towel just cause it fit, fit well in here with my hanging shirts. When I designed the van originally, I decided that I really wanted a spot to hang my shirts. You can see I got dress shirts in here. I do like doing the whole van life, going out and uh, hiking and that kind of thing. But I do also want my nice shirts when I have a film festival or an event where I'm speaking at that kind of thing. And I got these Ikea cubby boxes. So I got my pants. My shirts are down there, which is kind of opposite, but pants, shirts, and then got a basket full of my socks and underwear. I don't think I'll show that to you, but that's what's in here. And uh, this has been a really nice closet for me. I'm not a cabinet maker by any means. This is my first time ever making cabinets, but I'm kind of happy with the way they turned out. People always ask me about the color. Um, this is a stain by Minwax. It's called Royal Pine. I got it at Lowe's. So that's been kind of a cool, cool aspect of my van compared to a lot of other people's all right and then this is my main cabinet you can see i got this on here it's a piece of aluminum square and it keeps the drawers locked while i'm driving and i got all four different drawers i keep like my kitchen stuff up here my toiletries in this one um and then these two are kind of like catch-alls this one i got like my hot plate that i cook on that's in there and it's been a really nice uh, cabinet full of drawers. And then this piece that I used to lock the drawers, I just put this up here. I made this little shelf. It wasn't originally for that, but it works pretty well to keep that, that piece of aluminum in there. So the countertop is made from a piece of like $3. It's not wood, whatever Ikea makes. I found it in their scratch and dent section. That's what I put on here. I would have liked the butcher box, but like hundreds of dollars compared to three dollars this has been working just fine for me and then i got my upper cabinet this was kind of made for food but i put other stuff in here that i use regularly like my deodorant and stuff so i don't have to always unlock these drawers 
Oh, and there's also Pokemon cards in here, you know, in case I ever want to open some celebrations packs or something that's in there. Anyways, that's my upper cabinet. And while I got this open, I think I can talk a little bit about the insulation. So you can see here it's Reflectix. That's kind of the last layer before the plywood on the walls. But underneath the Reflectix, there's Havelock wool. So the whole van except for the floor is insulated with Havelock wool. And then moving on to the other side, I got this cabinet or shelf it's exposed but i pretty much keep all my mountain biking stuff up here my pads and my my ankle supports and that kind of stuff and then this is also where my charge controller is so i got the renergy wanderer charge controller just the basic one and this is running off of 300 watts of solar that's up on the roof and this is running to a 400 amp hour battery bank that i'll show you later but in the summertime plenty of power with the 300 watts running into the 400 amp hours in the winter where we're getting a little bit less sunlight it doesn't always keep up so like every two weeks i'll have to charge it with an external charger not a big deal but that's kind of where i'm at on power consumption and then below that we got my map which is a push pin map it's not showing all the places i've been to i've actually been to 46 out of the 50 states um, i'm missing these three up here and then hawaii as well but these are all the places that i've been to with the van and this is lit up by this light here um, it's just you know an led light and you can charge it with usb-c and it's kind of nice because you can take it off um, you can put it on motion detect mode they weren't very expensive, but they're kind of nice. And even with the magnets on here, I've never had an issue with those falling off. And I can charge that with my USB outlets that I have throughout the van. I got one right here, double USB outlet. And then I got one down here on the front of this cabinet. That one's not as convenient. <laughs> but then I also got one right up here as well um, and this one i use to power this speaker that i can plug into my phone uh, and play some music through this sound bar then i also have the 110 outlets here with more usb outlets and this runs off of my inverter i don't really use these too often but but they are there that's the only spot i have those types of outlets in the van the ceiling is made out of shiplap boards that i got at home depot these were like pre-stained shiplap boards and they were kind of cheap that's why i went with them and i thought it would be easy to you know work with something that was already stained which was true however this is probably like the lowest quality thing i have in the van but it's worked out pretty well so far i mean i can't really complain it was very cheap and it was very quick to install um, and then I got my rows of lights up here. There's two zones, front and the back. And those are controlled by two dimmer switches, which I have over here. So you can turn them all the way down and off and then turn them all the way up with these two dimmer switches here. Then also in the ceiling, I got my Max Air fan. It's the Max Air fan that everybody else has, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I lost the remote, but that's not really a big deal. I kind of just have it on or I don't. So turn it on, it's on, leave it on all day and night, and then turn it off when, when it's uh, not so hot out. And then I also have that fan back there, which is nothing fancy. It's like a school bus fan, but it's much nicer to have that blowing right on you as you're sleeping and uh, happy to have that in the van. Okay, and then we got my refrigerator, which is actually built into this bench here and it pulls out like this. And then there's my refrigerator. This is the Bodega. I don't know the model number, but it's Bodega. It's been a great fridge. The hinge broke, so um, I'm waiting on that. If anybody from Bodega is watching, I'm waiting on my hinges. While I got this open, I also want to mention that my heater is down here, which was an issue before because it was all exposed to one another and I had my diesel heater in there and it was getting the fridge hot. So they were working against each other, but I've insulated and put some really thick plywood in there and I haven't had any issues. I've had one winter like that already and everything's been good now. And I got one vent here for the heater. So when you close this, it comes out right here and then i got a second vent down here and then also down here i got my heater controller right here um just a standard on off i actually just use the key fob that it came with more often than than anything 
And then on the other side, under the other bench, um, this is just a storage spot. I got an electric heater if I ever have power, shore power, and then extra blankets, sleeping bags, that kind of thing. I have a lot of blankets, a lot of blankets. And another cool thing about this bench is that this actually slides out and then all these cushions make for a second bed. If you've watched my videos in the past, you'll know that I used to have a bench in here that slid out this way, which was really nice for when I would get out of bed and have to go around somebody else if they were sleeping. Now I kind of have to crawl over them, but this setup so much better for getting access to the refrigerator and giving somebody like an actual bed to sleep on. These cushions are made out of a twin bed, so I was able to get all four cushions out of one twin bed. And they're covered with some custom covers that I ordered on Etsy. I can put the link in the description below to that. They're, they're really nice. They're, they're very durable, so I'm very happy with those. So I originally designed this dinette configuration so that I could have multiple people in here to do podcasts. We've only done one podcast in here, but it's still kind of nice to have like the big benches. And then we also got a table that folds up right here. And then it just slides in and then you got a table. This is something I plan on redesigning a little bit so that I can push it in a little bit further to give yourself a little bit more room to sit down. But it's a table and it stows away real nicely. Yeah, that's my table. <laughs> All right, and then we get back to the bedroom, which is just the bed. But then I also got these cabinets up here and my television. A lot of people hate on van life people who have a television, but this is literally our house. I'm a filmmaker. I need to be watching things. So I got the TV in there and it actually has the uh, an Amazon Fire Stick. So I got the remotes. I keep those over here. And then in these cabinets, the back one has DVDs in there because there's also a DVD player in here. And then this one, this one has more Pokemon cards. So if we want to get a little bit more expensive, we can open up some Shining Legends if we're bored. Then my bed is just a memory foam mattress that I happen to have when I had my house. So I repurposed that for the van, which has been really nice. And part of the bed design, you can see I got these bump outs in the walls. So this actually gives you just a little bit of extra room that you can put your full size mattress in here. That's one of the advantages with the ProMaster is you can do that with internal bump outs and you don't have to have the external flares that go out. So there is full insulation behind these walls as well. However, um, it's just scrunched down a little bit just to give me that little bit extra room so that I can sleep this way instead of having to sleep this way and take up more room. That's where I sleep and I got this little reading light up here. It's got a couple different options for light. Um, that's just battery powered. It's not hooked in. I might change that in the future. And then right here I have a carbon monoxide detector, which I know you're not supposed to put your carbon monoxide detector so high. So I actually do have another one under the bench where the heater is so that if anything's going on down there, I have that as well. But this one I like to put up here because it also has the temperature on it. So I'm able to see that when it gets down to being 15 degrees. I did wake up one morning and it was 15 degrees in the van, uh, but it's nice to just kind of know the temperature right there. And then, this is a recently discovered tool that I found. I'm surprised I've never heard about it, especially for van life. I know people know about it, but this is just a hot water bottle. And uh, you know, when you're cooking your dinner or whatever, if you're able to heat up some water, get it to a boiling temperature, you put that water in here, you can have like a little heater all night. I actually learned about this while I was in Kenya. We went to dinner one night at our camp and we came back to our bedroom and they had these in our bed and I was like, holy crap, I need to get one of those for the van. So here it is, hot water bottle. You put it in the bed, you know, an hour before you go to sleep and it warms it up for you. And then you have this little heater that lasts eight or 10 hours through the night. And I didn't really know when exactly to talk about this, but I don't actually have running water in the van. Like I mentioned, I wasn't originally planning on living in the van when I designed it but I'm also happy to just not have water to deal with. There's so many other issues that come up when you're driving your home and things are moving around. And um, I just feel like I've been doing just fine without water. I don't have a toilet in here. I just plan my day around that, plan my night around that. And 
as nice as a shower would be, it would just take up so much room that I think I'd rather have to store all my stuff for my hobbies and the things that I enjoy doing. So Planet Fitness it is for showers. All right, so that's the inside of my van and now I'll show you the garage. All right, here's the garage. I always find it kind of weird when van lifers call this the garage, but I kind of get it. It's got garagey type things in here. Here's my water. I don't have running water in the van, so I just keep a jug of water right here. I usually actually just use like gallon jugs of water when, I, when I'm traveling, but I keep this in here when I'm on longer trips. And then right here is my fuel tank for the diesel heater. You can see it's like run out already. I, last time I was using it, I ran out of gas, but it is what it is. And then um, up here, you can't really see it, but this is where my battery bank is. So I have two 200 amp hour uh, batteries in there. So for 400 amp hours, you can't really see it because my snowboard is here, which couldn't tell you why the snowboard's in here because I don't have my boots or my snow pants or anything in here. So that'll probably get taken out uh, pretty soon here. And it's almost summertime, so. Um, and then Right here, I got my stand-up paddle board. Um, it's a blow-up paddle board, which I keep my pump up here for that. And the nice thing about this pump is that you would normally run it off like your cigarette outlet in the van, but I actually installed one down here as well, uh, an outlet. And right now the, the fan is plugged into it, but I can just unplug that, plug this in, and we're good to go. Some chairs in here as well. And then here is my toolbox. And in here, I have probably way more tools than I need to have, but just in case, we got all my Allen wrenches and screwdrivers, my sockets, my wrenches, my pliers, and my drill. My other drill's not in here right now, but um, very nice to have a drill when you're doing van life things, because you just never know where you might need to add an extra screw or an extra tie down or something like that. And this shelf up here wasn't really part of my original design. I originally put my bed where I did so I'd have enough room for my bikes under here and then this was exposed. And then I was thinking, why leave that open when I could build an extra shelf and I use it a lot. So over here I got my air pumps for the tires for my paddle board. This is some mountain bike gear and then more mountain bike gear. I mountain bike a lot, which is why I have three bikes in here. I actually, this is my old bike, my Diamondback. I don't really ride that really ever anymore um, i got my yt Izzo in here and then my dirt jumper as well those two i ride all the time and i do need to figure out a better solution for storing these because when i want to take them out it's a pain in the ass i kind of just have to pull out everything all at once so it'd be nice to get like a sliding rack in here but for now i'm going to embrace the struggle every single time up here you can see i added these little extra I don't know, holders for these blankets. Like I said, I've got a lot of blankets. So one other thing back here is I, I do have a light back here. Super bright LEDs. They're just uh, LED lights up here. And these are really nice because at nighttime I can kind of work out here and have, have a little bit of light spill. But then it's also just nice to have a light inside the garage. And that's just on this dimmer switch over here. All right, then one other thing to note back here, I do have the towing package. I have a enclosed trailer that I don't take with me all the time just when, when I need it. But I was able to put this on. They actually don't make a towing package for the 3500 that mounts to the frame. So this one's actually for the 2500 and they say it won't fit on the 3500 extended, but I made it work. You just got to cut a little bit off and you're good to go. So um, I got that on there and I, I put the light package on there as well. So I can tow a trailer and I do once in a while. Once in a while I tow a trailer. Yeah, so anyways, that's my van. Thank you guys for touring my tiny home on wheels. It doesn't have a name because I think that's weird too when people name their van, but it's just my van and that's it. Thanks for watching. You guys finally got a tour. Please hit the like button and subscribe because I think I got some more videos that I can come out with telling you guys more about the van and how I got it and how I was able to afford it. All right, we'll open one pack of Shining Legends Mew artwork. Let's see here. Code card.
energy for alligator how golurk purloin minon stunfisk breloom ekans torcat and ah uh, should never open that pack